Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. I am very proud and also feel very privileged to be practicing medicine in 2021. We have some amazing treatments that were unthinkable a few years ago. Antibiotics for previously incurable bacterial infections. Over many years, we've developed protocols to treat illnesses and diseases such as heart attacks. And to be honest, all of these things are bloody brilliant. They've saved a lot of lives. However, history does suggest that when we do things too fast in medicine and healthcare, we often tend to be prone to making mistakes. And I'd like to relate to you a story from my medical residency. Back when I was an intern, there was a huge push in healthcare facilities to have strict blood sugar control in hospitalized patients, obviously mainly diabetics. We wanted the blood sugars to be between 80 and 110, which is very strict. And I remember in my institution, there were posters up on the walls. Nurses were going around checking finger sticks frequently. And our attendings and professors were really emphasizing this point, telling us to have strict blood sugar control in all of our patients. And this was based on a single study which was published in a premier medical journal that showed better outcomes in patients who were on a surgical intensive care unit. But something didn't seem right to me. It seemed overly aggressive. So I decided to conduct my own research into this. And I remember people telling me I was crazy. Of course, it's correct to have strict blood sugar control in patients. And it really felt like a David versus Goliath battle. But nevertheless, I persisted. I collected all the data. And sure enough, my study results did show a trend towards worse outcomes in patients who had strict blood sugar control. And I actually presented my oral research at a local academic meeting and actually won a prize for it. We actually beat our local big name rivals, Johns Hopkins, which was one of the proudest moments in my career. It was great to, to beat them uh, and win the prize. My uh, paper then got published in an endocrinology journal. And sure enough, over the next couple of years, more and more data and research papers came out showing that actually patients with strict blood sugar control were doing worse in the hospital. We were actually potentially harming them. We were lowering their blood sugars, making them hypoglycemic, which could be dangerous. Then like clockwork, all of the national guidelines, institutional guidelines changed and we stopped wanting to strictly control blood sugars and we allowed the blood sugars to be higher than that if patients were in the hospital, higher than that 80 to 110 range. There was no need to be so aggressive. And I tell this story not to blow my own trumpet, as it were, but to really highlight how things can really escalate very quickly in medicine and healthcare. And nobody had the common sense to look at the situation and say, why would we extrapolate one study result that was done in a very select group of patients, surgical ICU patients, and apply that to everyone in healthcare and have all healthcare institutions saying, yes, you must have strict blood sugar control in all patients. Nobody thought that. And I remember the title of my oral presentation was Strict Blood Sugar Control. Have we jumped on the bandwagon too quickly? Obviously, I thought we had. And I concluded my presentation by saying that the human body has evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to respond in a certain way to stress. We literally can't even imagine the timelines involved. And should we be overly aggressive about suppressing that response? Uh, everybody's blood sugar goes up when their body is under stress. And in diabetics, that can happen more. Should we be trying to aggressively lower it? We don't want it to be too high, but we don't necessarily need it to be strictly controlled within a very narrow level. And that was my conclusion. And I remember, uh, as I said, people said I was crazy when I first started questioning this. And I can tell you that there have been countless examples of this. This is just one example from my own career, but countless examples where things are rolled out very quickly in healthcare and medicine, and we realize afterwards that it's wrong. And my experience of not just healthcare, but life in general, is that when you are able to take a step back and you look at things rationally and logically, and you are able to say, hold on a minute, that doesn't make sense. You often end up being proved right in the end, whether it's one, two years or however long. If you are, if you are looking at something that doesn't follow logic, it ends up being proved wrong in the end. 
And groupthink is a very powerful thing. From a human behavioral psychology standpoint, nobody is immune to it, no pun intended. Whether it's the average Joe on the street, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a medical profession, whether it's scientist, groupthink is very real. And at this unique point in our history, where we're rolling out this mass vaccination campaign, literally nothing like this has ever been done in human history and coordinated to this degree. I would urge the medical community and scientists to just take a few deep breaths, step back from the wave and think very carefully whether everything we're doing is necessarily right. There's a lot of questions out there, like should we be vaccinating people so soon after the, they've recovered from COVID? I've literally seen people who have recovered from COVID and within a week or two, they receive the vaccine. Is that the right thing to do? Should we be vaccinating children? That's another huge area of debate right now. And there's lots of questions like that. And what we have to do with uh, do as the medical community is wonder whether we need more time and data to answer some of these questions. So my advice is that we should be proceeding with a bit more caution here over the next few months. Thanks very much for listening. Dr. Sunil Dan, follow me on YouTube and Facebook, MedStoic Lifestyle Medicine. Remember to keep asking those questions because nothing can be more important than your own health.